<laughs> the Godfather Part 2 follows Don Michael Corleone, now the head of the Corleone crime family after taking over after his father's passing and eliminating all of his enemies in New York. Michael leaves New York for Nevada, putting the Corleone crime family in the hands of his trusted capo Peter Clemenza and later Frank Pentangeli after Clemenza's death. Michael seeks to gain a reputation for himself and also to legitimise his image as a successful businessman rather than a sinister individual with links to the underworld, and he begins to work on potentially lucrative deals in Cuba with like-minded businessmen, deals which, in the words of Hyman Roth, not even Michael's father could have dreamed of, bigger than US steel. Unfortunately for Michael, two assassins attempt to murder him in his Lake Tahoe home, leaving his family shattered and him furious. His plans are put on hold, as he leaves Nevada and looks to find out who tried to have him killed and exact his revenge. Michael leaves Corleone attorney Tom Hagen in charge of affairs in his absence, literally saying, you're gonna be the Don, and it's partly because Tom is the only man by this point in the story who Michael can trust, given Michael has left Tom out of intimate Corleone business dealings and thus is not in a position to betray him. The names of Michael's trusted bodyguards are mentioned by Tom, Rocco Lampone and Al Neri, but Michael dismisses them as working for money and thus susceptible to betraying him. It's one of Michael's lowest points throughout the entire saga, a time where he has very few people who he can trust, even his wife and brother end up betraying him. When he is on the hunt for evidence against his would-be killers in Havana, when he talks to Hyman Roth, when he meets Frank Pentangeli back in New York, he is accompanied by this man, Amerigo Busetta. Little is known of Busetta. He has absolutely no backstory, he has no lines of dialogue, and literature cannot help us, as this character does not exist in Mario Puzo's The Godfather novel. In fact, the entirety of The Godfather Part 2, aside from the young Vito segment, make up no part of the book. Busetta is a Sicilian mob enforcer brought over from the old country to act as Michael's bodyguard and assassin during the events of the second film. He is not privy to Michael's business dealings, staying outside whenever Michael has a meeting. His loyalty is clearly only to Michael. To such an extent, he awaits the Don's approval before he even shakes Fredo's hand. On New Year's Eve, he is given the task of killing Hyman Roth, but succeeds in only killing Roth's Sicilian messenger boy Johnny Ola, before being killed himself by Cuban authorities before he can take out Roth. An enigmatic and imposing looking man, though he possesses no backstory, we can piece together bits of information to learn more about him. So first off, why exactly is Michael walking around with this man who's appeared out of nowhere instead of Rocco or Al Neri? Well, as mentioned earlier, Michael cannot even trust his own men, as someone has betrayed him, someone let the two assassins in to the Lake Tahoe compound. So the highly paranoid Michael will not want to be walking around with men he cannot trust, so instead, he has Busetta flown in from Sicily, a character who clearly is a when the chips are down muscle, a man to use when all other options have been exhausted. Perhaps Michael called in a favour, or maybe he had Busetta on retainer. Michael is also travelling in stealth, as he says to Pentangeli, I didn't want you to know I was coming. This wouldn't have worked if he brought Rocco or Neri with him, as the duo would have more men working under them, so word would have gotten out that Michael was on the move and where he was possibly going. In spite of apparently being played by a Hungarian sculptor, there is something about Busetta that instantly makes Michael more imposing by having this guy walking a few steps behind him wherever he goes. He looks absolutely deadly, and given his age and weathered look, you imagine that this guy has a long bloody history. There's a no-nonsense old school vibe about the guy, and it's likely he doesn't speak English. His enigmatic lack of backstory or lack of lines suggests he may be a representation of the darkness that lingers over Michael, something of a faceless personification of Michael's psyche. Times have changed. Where Michael once would have bodyguards around him who would also look after his kids and be part of celebrations, for now he is sticking with deadly assassins. According to the wiki of the character, Busetta was born in Sicily and, as a young man, began to murder for money, becoming renowned for his assassination skills. 
he became an associate of the Tomasino crime family, Don Tomasino being the wheelchair-bound Don whose protection Michael is under in the first film, and somewhere along the way he was recruited by the Corleone crime family. I don't exactly know where this information is from, I don't think it's actually based on anything unless it's from a video game or something. Though he's just a background character, Busetta as a concept more than a character is actually quite interesting because he's basically what is referred to as a zip. Fans of The Sopranos will be familiar with this term as the character Furio is often referred to as a zip, a slang derogatory term used by Italian Americans in reference to newer Italian and Sicilian immigrants and specifically mobsters coming in from the old country. There was a level of tension between the imported Sicilian gangsters and their Italian American counterparts, sometimes just because of the general bigotry and sometimes a genuine difficulty in understanding the dialect of the Sicilians. Zips were brought over from the old country to bolster the ranks of the mafia. In The Sopranos, there is a stark difference between the Jersey mobsters and Furio, the latter being ruthless, efficient and no-nonsense. Similarly, Real life Zips lived by older, more brutal codes, and were not averse to performing actions which would be considered low or dirty even by Italian American mob standards, such as the killing of women, children, police or the involvement in drug trafficking. The mob could have these men do things their own crews wouldn't do, and thus they could keep their own hands clean. Plus, the Zips could come in, perform murders and then be sent back to the old country with law enforcement unable to tie the murders to the American gangsters. It is thought that sometimes Zips were also young men without families, sold the promise of a new life in America in exchange for getting their hands dirty on occasion, and sometimes once they had performed their kill they too were taken out to avoid leaving a trace. Zips were effective given their unknown status in the states and lack of police records. In any case, the US Mafia's plans with the Zips is thought to have failed given they were too brutal, reckless and attracted too much attention to the mob. They were also insular in the sense that they, like Busetta, only had loyalty for the very highest ranks of the Mafia, causing friction and amnosity among the lower street level guys. They are thought to have been too public with many of their murders for the mob's taste and are thought to have popularised car bombings which endangered innocent bystanders. So it's interesting that through a relatively minor character, the film shows us a mob phenomenon that was starting to become more and more apparent, imported assassins and enforcers from the old country. So what do you think of Busetta? Let me know in the comments below, subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching. Before we finish, I'd just like to thank my patrons, Andre Millington, Nicholas Curtis, Daniel P and Countess von Zarovic, and also my channel members, the new on Gaum24, Rikers, Michael Awatwi, Damian Irving and Lang Deng.